All right, on question one, they ask us to describe the distribution of square footages of rooms. So when you describe a distribution, don't forget your SOX. So SOX is an acronym that stands for shape, outliers, center, and spread. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is shape. Now we see a clear bimodal distribution here. So that's the first thing we'll say. Based on the histogram, the rooms follow a bimodal distribution with a peak between 150 and 200, and then the other peak right here between 250 and 300 square feet. Next thing we're gonna talk about is that the distribution is roughly symmetric. Now in part A, they say, based on the histogram, write a few sentences. So even though we know what the value of the median is from part B, we're gonna to try to figure it out from only this histogram. So since there's 20 rooms, the median would be the value between the 10th and the 20th room when they're arranged by square footage. So if we count up here, three, six, that's nine rooms, 10 rooms. So the first 10 rooms are all 250 or less and rooms 11 to 20 are up here. So the median is gonna be somewhere between 250 and 300. So that's what we say, the medium room size is between 250 and 300 feet. Next, we're gonna talk about the spread. And all we can really say is that the room sizes varied from about 100 to 350 square feet. And then based on only this histogram, we can say there doesn't appear to be any outliers. All right, in part B, they give us some summary information and they say use this to figure out if there's any potential outliers. So a great way to check for outliers is the 1.5 IQR check. So here's what we do. We first need to figure out what the IQR is. And IQR is quartile three minus quartile one. And both of those are given to us in the data. So 292 minus 174 which turns out to be 118. Now what we need to do is multiply that by 1.5. And that gives us 177. Now 177 establishes how far from quartile one or quartile three a data point would need to be to be considered an outlier. So let's check for lower outliers. So we're gonna take quartile one and subtract 177 from it. And we get negative three. Now since there's no square footages that are negative three or less, there's no lower outliers. Now let's check for upper outliers. Now we can see that the maximum square footage is 315, but to be an upper outlier, you'd have to be 469 or above. So there is also no upper outliers. So with no outliers, we're ready to make a box plot. So to make a box plot, you have to use your five number summary. That's these numbers right here. So we're gonna start by making a small vertical line at 134, the minimum. Then another small vertical line at the maximum, 315. Now we're gonna make larger vertical lines at quartile one, the median, and quartile three. Now connect these middle three with your box, and then draw your whiskers out to these. Some other things to remember, make sure you labeled your axis with the right context and units, and there's your box plot. Part C asks, what characteristic of shape of room size is apparent from the histogram, but not from the box plot? So when we're looking at the shape of the histogram, we clearly see this bimodalness. On the box plot, we can't see that at all. So that's our answer. So we wrote, on the histogram, it's clear the room sizes have a bimodal shape to their distribution. This cannot be seen in the box plots. If you liked my explanation of this problem, you might like my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It has 100 problems in it, and every single problem has a YouTube video like this explaining every single step, every single calculator command, everything. So a lot of classes this year have used this book for a study aid for the AP exam, and some teachers have even used it for a flipped classroom design. Also, if you're an AP stats teacher or a college statistics teacher and you want a free copy of this book, uh, send me an email and I'd be happy to send you one.